start out like this. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to Buzzkill. We've got an exciting episode today. We've got Ryan, who is the America's lead for customer architecture and engineering at Microsoft. We're really excited to have her today. She's done a lot of great work. Um, I've listened to a lot of her podcasts, and she does a really, really good job speaking to the security topic that we've had a series going on. Um, again, my name is Hunter Willis, and we've got Jay Liska on. Um, Jay, you want to say a thing or two, and then we'll uh, we'll dive right into to it. Tell a us about thing, what we're talking about today. A thing or two, huh? Yeah. Um, no, so we've, we've had this series on security. We've talked about personal security. We've talked about network security. Um, and and uh, I was listening to Jeremy Woods, A Geek Within, and Ryan, you were you were the guest there, and I realized that I really wish we had had you, you, awareness of you months ago because you were a perfect fit for not just your your subject matter, but your but your personality. And and frankly, um, you know, we're working with 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 Hunter over here. Uh, it's good to have people that have a good personality match because um, uh, he's a little over the top sometimes. Not just, sure a little, just, just a little, just a little bit. Just a so little. what you're saying is I'm a little over the top sometimes. Oh, I'm <laughs> saying that you compliment that very well. This is fantastic. I, I'm not going to say no, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have fun. Okay, it's all good. good. <laughs> this is great. So, oh, so <laughs> our, our goal today, listening to some of the things you talked about and especially the, the kind of the direction you come from. Um, you don't talk about security uh, in, in a boring subject, and uh, I appreciate that because it shouldn't be, um, even though most end users think it is. Most end users think security is this thing that keeps them from doing what they want to do. And so I thought we could start with that. If you could you know, come at it from a, what is security to you? What does that really mean? Um, and, and maybe we'll see where that takes us. Yeah. Uh, no, that's great. Um, I like to uh, kind of explain it uh, in a way where it can pertain to whatever type of security you're talking about, whether it's physical security or information security, whatever, right? And so for an overarching definition, it is essentially um, preventing access or uh, unauthorized changes to your assets um, and also ensuring that you maintain the ability to uh, have authorized access and authorized changes. So that kind of goes back to what's called the CIA triad, um, which I only remember it because it CIA it makes it fun, um, but confidentiality and uh, integrity and security. Did you mute him? <laughs> no, 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 I did not. But uh, he was muted. I did, in fact, mute myself. That no, I was, was going to ask fun. if you said CIA, if it was the CIA we thought it was. So no, uh, no, they're they're not as much fun. Um, no. Oh, I, I don't know if I should say that on the recording. It's public now. Um, we can't edit this. <laughs> but so so basically, you know, it's, it's just um, whether it's your own personal security, making sure that nobody outside of the people that you want to have access to your stuff um, has access to it or the ability to change it and make changes. Um, because if we're, if we send, um, an email or something and, and somebody changes the content of it, um, then we we lose that um, confidence that that is, you know, what what we actually sent. And people can use it to impersonate you, right? right. Um, and say, oh, well, but you said this in this email. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I think that that can apply to everything in our lives, whether it's, um, you know, your banking app or whether it's something at work, um, you know, access to your house or Alexa or Google. Yeah. Sorry, it responded to you. Okay, Google. <laughs> no, no, it was the first one. Don't worry. Was... <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, it's interesting because as technology, um, as technology, increases in capability we have more and more 
guttural reaction to what they're doing. So you mentioned the Amazon platform there, and they recently announced that they were going to turn on Wi-Fi for all of their devices so they could kind of mesh together. And I'm totally o- oversimplifying what they're actually doing. And it was it was a, hey, we're doing this, and if you don't want it, here's how to turn it off. And right. um, it was an it's automatic that, opt-in like, in like you said, it's, op- yeah. Right. But it's that confidence. It's like confidence in, is this thing going to get me killed or is it going to pr- pro- properly um, manage my shopping list? Um, uh, yeah. In some of the conversations that we've been having, we've kind of explored how there are these things in our lives where we don't think of them as being a security risk, right? Or of, of any kind. And um, we had Dana was talking about how, like with COVID, for instance, we had Dana Simberkoff on who was a uh, uh, from that point, um, she explained that like a lot of restaurants are just like taking people's personal information because they need their name for the COVID tracing and stuff. And it's like, well, what like what are they doing with that? How are they storing it? You know, if the teenager like writes your stuff into the phone, it's like, OK, well, where's that going? You know, mm-hmm. things like this. Yeah. yeah I, and actually, it's not just with COVID that 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 is a, you know, a security concern. Right. So I, I was in uh, a hotel once and I had like a club access and mm-hmm. um, they were doing some kind of maintenance or renovation. And um, and so I wanted to go to the lounge. And um, so in instead of the normal key card entry, they had um, separated out the lounge to one of their conference rooms. Well, as I'm walking up, I see this stapled paper uh, sitting on a desk completely unattended, right? And so I pick it up mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, look, there's my name. There's my room owner, oh, you know? Boy. <laughs> and so I picked it up and I was like, well, this is a security concern. And, and I went and I talked to somebody. Um, and so it's like, it's those type of things like, um, you know, that we... We often, uh, particularly in our personal lives, have an implicit trust that the companies um, and and people that we are doing business with or interacting with, that um, they're you know keeping our information confidential, that they're that they have secure practices. We don't think about what's actually happening uh, after we give them our data or. Um, right. you know, even registering for a hotel room. But something else that we talk about, you know, one of the big kind of themes of what we're doing here is, you know, trying to um, explain that, you know, the goal is not just to lock everything down, right? And a whole lot of what Microsoft has done is, you know, a strategy around this, making things like, yes, you want to have enough tools to be able to secure the data that needs to be secure, but it needs to be easy enough that users can access it, that people can still do what they they need and want to do. Huh. But, um, you know, I've heard you talk about this and we've had a couple of conversations about this too, but you had some really good examples of how kind of organizations were kind of just tossed to the wolves when it came to, you know, hate to switch it back to COVID, right? But there was this massive transition and people had a lot of, you know, uh, organizations that weren't already in the cloud or hadn't made a digital transition, had a lot of paper processes that, you know, had to be shift digitally and people were kind of thrown to the woods for that, right? Um, do you have some other examples of how like organizations just kind of throw their users to the wolves when it comes to these processes without proper transitions and some of the things that you've seen when it comes to those kinds of like, hey, hey, here's a security process, but does it really make things secure, right? Or like, yeah. did they do enough training, right? Like, are the users actually going to do this thing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, one of the the best examples when it when you think about COVID is that we suddenly shifted from you know this in office work to remote work, right? And uh, and what's funny is that all of a sudden uh, a whole bunch of companies had to increase their VPN uh, capabilities because they had all of these people coming in on VPN. Um, (laughs) and yeah, and, and so, you know, how they had built their infrastructure, it wasn't able to actually, um, you know, carry that load. Uh, but again, it goes back to that implicit trust, right? We often incorrectly, uh, have an implicit trust that, uh, our network is secure. 
and therefore our VPN is secure, right? But they didn't like they didn't even have um, what you know traditionally we would call uh, uh, you know security where you have a domain join device and that device then goes home with with the user and they access you know the the corporate network through a VPN after they get home and they're using their own home internet right you didn't have that what you had was a whole bunch of uh, of users using their personal devices. You have no idea what kind of security they have on their devices. You have no idea whether or not they have an antivirus, whether it's up to date, whether they're regularly getting definitions, um, whether they have an open or a closed network, you know, whether they're sharing it with their neighbor across the street or, you know, borrowing it from their neighbor across the street. You know, you don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, but but there's this implicit trust there with uh, with the virtual private network, and it's like, well, why why would, why would you do that? Um, uh, and um, and so there there was uh, it was unfortunate because we weren't we weren't you know teaching um, the end users how to properly secure their um, their environments at home, and there wasn't an easy way to do it, right? Yeah. Like. You had to you almost had to go out and seek that information for yourself because you were already thinking about it because you were already security minded or what have you. Um, I'm curious. Uh, yeah. And, right. um, you know, maybe you're, you know, following somebody on Twitter and, you know, InfoSec Twitter is amazing. Um, uh, and then all of a sudden you, uh, you know, you you see this thing about, oh, how to secure your home network. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, that, that that's one of the things where with COVID, like people didn't uh, they didn't even know how to train their end users on, on how to do that. And um, and then you couple that with uh, the already outdated um, policies that they had in place, like password policies. OK, every 90 days, you're going to have to create a new password. Mm -hmm. You know what that's going to it's going to be fall 2020. Winter 2020, yeah. <laughs> bang, you know, exclamation point, exclamation point. I never even thought of doing that. That's genius. That's great. <laughs> you know, like uh, the, the, that's that's what people do. And, um, and you know, that's what why um, like Microsoft created cus the custom band password list and, and band password list in general. And so even on a consumer account, you would go in and you try to set, you know, an insecure or a um, a weak password and, you know, I'll say, well, you know, you can't do that. Um, uh, but it's like, okay, well, we're, we're continuing to have these outdated password policies that, that don't follow NIST guidance. Um, we're continuing to have passwords in general. I will tell you this. I do not know what my password is for my work account. I, I just, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I don't remember the last time I put it in. In fact, sometimes I forget my device pin because uh, I don't put that in very often either because I do the facial rec recognition. Um, but then like sometimes I'm having a bad hair day and it's all the way up here. So uh, it just doesn't recognize me. That's not really true, but um, sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> right? If you shave, if you shave and then all of a sudden it doesn't recognize you. Right. Yeah, no, um, but, but sometimes it doesn't was work. like, wait, your beard's too long. You're not the same guy. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't work and then I have to input my pen and, um, you know, technical malfunctions. The camera decides to, I don't know, be wonky. Um, and uh, and I'll for, I'll forget my pen. I'm like, oh, was it this one or that one? Um, and then uh, you know, like people aren't educated about that, and so they don't know that. Um, and this even security people will do this, yeah. and they'll say this, yeah. like like how is that how is that more secure than than having a complex password policy? Like how is that more secure? Well, because you would have to physically have the device, so that's that's one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's tied to that and, and you'd have to have the code at the same well, time. And Microsoft published that study, I guess it was probably close to a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago now, where it's like, if they, people, hackers that are getting access to things, whatever your current password is, they know it. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter how big it is or how much you change it. They're getting it through like keystroke logging and other mechanisms. So it's like, 
changing your password or having a complex one and just having a password isn't it's not really enough anymore so often, yeah, uh, you know? phishing phishing is the most yeah. prevalent um uh attack that because it's, it's easy right and it, it requires very low effort you can do it in an automated fashion if i was an attacker that's what i would do i'm, n- I'm not but you know if i was <laughs> um but you know you should like, make a movie um, I'll be like hackers. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, you know, y- you couple the, these bad password policies and then, and then, um, organizations aren't using things like 2FA, um, either. Right. Yeah. Or, um, and, and even like the 2FA thing, it's like that, that's subject to vulnerability as well. Like what's the most prevalent type of 2FA that we have? You know. I know it's text messaging and you can totally spoof that. You can totally hack the, 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 the phone. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you know, I hijacked man the, in the middle. Thank you. I couldn't get the words out that you can totally that. Yeah. Like, um, uh, Reddit, right. Reddit mm-hmm. had two FA in place. Um, but they were using SMS. Uh, so, you know, like, don't get me wrong. There's so many like, things. Yeah. yeah. SMS two FA is better than no two FA. If that's the right. only route you should go or you can go, then then go that route. But, um, you know, it's much easier to use your to have the end user use their phone. Right. A phone is something that they have. Right. Yep. Um, yep. And then, you know, use an app. What's one more app? You know, they already have, you know, 16 <laughs> gigs worth of apps or <laughs> in so my case, apps, I think I, can't handle it. I think so, I'm at like almost 100 gigs. It's kind so. Of bad. So, like, our next question after the last one was going to be, right, what are some of the weaknesses, right, of these processes? And what are they? And I think we've explored that really, really well. So thank you for all this. This is really great. Um, I wanted to just kind of, like, you know, in summary for all the things that we just went through, right, we're really looking at things like VPNs where users aren't really given a structured process for that VPN or the VPN isn't, you know, the backbone of the VPN doesn't have enough resource to actually, like, maintain it for the organization, right, which is... Mm -hmm. We've seen this. Jay and I have seen it. You've seen it, Ryan. Like that's been a big thing for COVID. Um, yeah. And also just kind of old school processes. Our IT departments so often are just not really uh, kind of up to date with what is required and how things are changing. Um, and you also talked about how like even with multi-factor 2, 2FA, multi-factor authentication, right, or changing passwords and things like this that again traditionally users are saying hey this is secure i'm changing my password even if you keep track of it and everything it's like look those days are over those (laughs) are the old times you know the the things that people should be doing moving forward have changed right but Mm -hmm. organizations so what i want to ask is right organizations we've seen have had a hard time keeping up with not just maintaining their well I mean, first off, let's be honest, figuring out if they're actually going to let their workers work from home now, right? But technologically enabling that for their their companies, do you feel like and have you seen that that we think that hackers are like taking advantage of this situation? Do you feel like you've seen kind of an uptick in phishing attacks, for instance, like you said, or or other kinds of things, especially in your position, you know, having such a broad, you know, audience here, right? Or customer base, I should say. Yeah. So, um, and attackers will take advantage of any situation, right? Yeah. Um, in one of your other, uh, podcasts, you were talking about people posting on social media that they were leaving town. That's a opportunity, right? Um, and so, you know, it, hurricane Katrina, um, the different uh, environmental things, the fires in California, the fires that we had here in Washington, um, like people take advantage of that. Political um, political rallies, uh, I mean, uh, what was that app? Um, Parlor got hacked, right? People people take advantage of of these uh, of these um, uh, of social uh, conflict. They take advantage mm-hmm. of of you know mass crises. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. And so like things like phishing, like people will take advantage of that and, and, uh, or take advantage of COVID through phishing. Uh, and it's not just, you know, to, 
uh, for con for enterprises, right? It's for consumers as well. Um, but I mean, really, like uh, it's anything that they'll, they'll they'll take advantage of it. I think that this is just this is just another thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. This is just yeah. another thing and, and uh, another you know mark on the rung. Uh, but uh, like uh, the bit, one of the big things was the supply chain. Right, because we had massive shortages throughout yeah. the entire world. It's still happening. Um, the the yeah, the, the backlog of it. And so there was a desperation there, and and that desperation, fear, all of these very like volatile emotions. Those are things that that attackers just thrive on, right? They they want to take advantage of that because that's when people will do things that you know, even if they are normally very logical people or very secure people, they will do things um, that they wouldn't normally do because they're acting out of desperation. They're acting out of fear. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so let me let me ask you a question. So so what are some of the more secure processes or one, one of the one is one some of the more secure things that organizations should be looking at so you talked about two-factor auth and we talked about text versus app um we talked about vpn and we talked about you know uh the the unsecure byod with no um required minimums versus you know the the actual office device like what do you what would you if you were sitting down with an organization for the first time not to take your consulting fee away but like what would your <laughs> you guys got to start doing x like what would you what would you start with yeah so um get so, microsoft as your directory no sorry right so i was actually um uh working with this nonprofit um because i i was um just i was there and um and some of the things that i i saw there was that you know they had shared passwords don't do that don't share passwords. Um, you know, everyone should have their own identity. Everyone should have their own password. But really, just like get rid of passwords. You know, like that's so 2019. Um, but uh, get rid of passwords. You know, you can use. I, I log in with my phone. I don't even need another device. I log in with my phone. You know, um, and. I paid a thousand bucks for this, so uh, you know I might as well get the most use out of it as I can, right? I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, go passwordless uh, uh, and 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 get there faster. You know, the biggest thing uh, about security is that it's not it's not a revenue producing uh, thing, right? And so uh, it's 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 a struggle to get funding for all of these right. initiatives that that they want to accomplish but well also uh, a lot of people they just hate security you know they hate the security department they're they're just trying to stop me from doing my job and so there needs to be like an integration there of uh, of security into all of the different um uh departments and it's not it's it's not um to act as oversight right because when you when you have someone acting as oversight and people just in general will automatically hate them right? right but but to to approach um approach the business goals of that 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 business unit with empathy and understand what they're trying to accomplish and find a way to do it um you know um in a in a way that doesn't create barriers because if you put up barriers people will still have to do their job because that's what puts food on the table and so they will find a way around it okay um so there's that but when, when we go back to the 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 vpn thing look just stop implicitly trusting just stop like don't trust your network don't trust it like it if somebody's in your network, that doesn't mean that they are authorized to access things. Don't don't trust it, right? Um, so you know, by extension, don't trust the VPN. Just because somebody came in on a VPN doesn't mean that they're trusted. Um, I don't I don't know why this is still a thing, but it is. Um, you know, the buzzword is our phrase zero trust. You know, right? Approach things from a zero trust perspective. You know, give give access when someone is authorized when after someone has authenticated and after you you have 
they have passed the conditional access policies that you have in place that say, say OK, they're trying to access this from uh, a device that I issued to them. You know, the, I, I, I put all of the security you know, protocol on that device. I know that it's a device that that is known to me and and it's safe. And so they can access these resources, they can download whatever. Um, but then, you know, they want to access things from their phone because that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I probably use my phone for work equal to or even more than I use my laptop. Right, so sure. I'll start also working in bed while I'm just like, you know, kind of, mm, I, don't, I don't really want to get up and do all the things. You still have that blur over your eyes. You're, you're yeah, barely you know, reading the little message. Little eye boogies. Um, so, you know, I, I access my email, whatever. I'll spend like an hour and a half in bed, just like kind of waking up and not wanting to people. And yep. uh, and and I'll just be on my Before phone giving email coffee. or, you know, responding there to no DevOps problem. items or whatever. So, so this is the thing, the things that you touched on here. I know, I'm so excited. I'm just, I'm just going to have to <laughs> talk like this. The things that you touched on, that's, but that's why we call this buzzkill. Right, because this is the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Some of the things you touched on, right? It's, hey, uh, IT is an expense, right? Well, IT doesn't want to have to be approaching what they need to do their jobs properly. And this is why IT people don't care and know so much about these things that are hard to deal with. We hear it all day long. They go in and they're like, hey, we have to have this or everything is going to collapse. And the organization's yeah. like, look, look, we're not made of money here, okay? All right. <laughs> It's like, well, you are made of like computers because everybody's using one and that's the company. And if you don't do this, right. But those are really tough conversations to have. And like you said, also, you touched on it and you saw this was was waving my hands wildly while you were going through this stuff. Like, yes, yes. Right. Like it, it's those conversations. It's IT saying to the rest of the organization, look, this is super, super, super important. It has to be done right. And the other thing and the thing that IT hates talking about, but the organization needs so desperately without it, none of this stuff can work, right? Training, good mm -hmm. training that people want to have, people need to know what's in it for them, right? These are the drumbeat themes of what Jay, like the reason that Jay and I are doing a podcast together is because we want to explain this to organizations like this is so, so important for anybody that's listening right now. The, the training, the communication, getting the organization to understand how important it is to invest in security because it's one of these things. And we, she, Ryan has heard it. I know Jay has heard it. I've heard it from so many organizations. They call and it's like they got in a car accident and they didn't have insurance and they're just weeping about it. And it's like, look. You can do it right now. If you don't do it before it happens, then that's the. That's yeah. it. Like I, I, you know, I spend 15 bucks a month on my phone to insure it so that I don't have to spend another thousand dollars when I inevitably drop it and break it because of that. And, and that's what security is all about. Right. It's yep. um, it's not about preventing um, the breach because the breach is going to happen. Right. It's just a matter of when. It's like when you're riding a motorcycle, it's not if you're going to lay it down, it's when you're going to lay it down, right? Um, uh, and so if you always approach things with that assumed breach mentality, then you can look at things, well, how can I minimize the risk, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you minimize the risk by investing in security, by investing in your people, by teaching them in, in a very consumable way Right. Why security is important and how to I, be secure. So we give them that one hour security training that's that recorded PowerPoint they have to once take a once year. a year, right? No. Pizza parties, posters. We need a, like a three P thing. Help me, Ryan, help me think of another P, right? Like pizza parties, posters, and polite coffee dates. I don't know. What would you say? <laughs> no, that's weird. Look at her face. Oh, that was horrible. I'm gonna I'm gonna go away now. Oh, no, that was so terrible. <laughs> it was. It was bad. But but really, like for for reaching milestones when it comes to these things, right? Like pizza parties is always a big one that that wins over. Right. But what would you say? Right. What do you think are some good kind of softer? What are some real? Ways yeah. People to pay attention. Uh, <laughs> um, so one of the things that one of the companies that I, I worked with and I was helping them with their security, they had um, 
they had tech days. And during those tech days, they gave away like the little security camera covers. Um, they had, uh, it was like a fair, you know, they had games, they had oh, like cool. little games. Um, and then they had um, like uh, the YubiKey uh, okay. giveaways. Um, and it's like, people like, people like free stuff. I, I don't know if, you know, I can say the other thing, but you know, I people, would not have people, been offended. People like it, you know, they, yeah. they, they want, they like swag. Yeah. The number one thing that my team asked for this year was more swag. Mm -hmm. Like I, I only got 97% on my like uh, employee satisfaction. <laughs> and I was like, how swag. can I make this better? How can I reach a hundred percent? And they're like, oh, well we want more swag. Yeah. And I was like that, like, I mean, okay. You need it's to put so true, what's your though, store on right? more stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Exactly. And they they want shirts that say Microsoft Security, and all, really it's it's just these little 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 boxes that they want. You know, mm -hmm. they they want a rep. They want to be like, hey, look, I'm here. I made it. Yeah. I made it to right. Microsoft. There you go. Like, this is my app point That would have been perfect. Right. right? That would have been a perfect I'm gift. Gonna finish the rest but, of the um, like this and just rep. <laughs> they need to make one that like does something with the beard because I feel like. I, I don't know. I don't know. But the beard yeah. has been really tough. The beard has been that I have a friend who makes masks and she actually makes it, it. If you fold it in half, it looks like an ax and, and it does go under, which it it's great from that perspective. But then when you take it off, like the beard is just, <laughs> it's just, no, I, the COVID but, um, beard was great and I love it but masks have made it really hard and I have gone too far. Please continue. You, you really like give me like these squirrel moments. I'm just like squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we should go on that. Um, no, uh, another thing is uh, uh, CTFs. Those are fun. Um, and uh, uh, you know, one of the ones that uh, I did um, was they did it for the interns. Actually, they did a CTF for interns. Can you hear the dogs barking? I, I heard a bark, but CTF, you said, C, so you said a few things I want to clarify. So CTF is capture the flag. Right. Okay. Oh, okay, okay cool. So yeah, sorry. Sorry. I, no, it's okay. Capture the flag. Okay. Yes. Um, I was too insecure so, to ask. So uh, those are really good, especially the, the intro ones. Actually, uh, Colonel Khan this last year, um, they, did a, they did a beginner CTF. Um, like a CTF 101, which I thought was really cool um, because, you know, a lot of times people like they don't go into CTS because they they feel like they can't get very far because they don't know what the steps are to kind of um, progress on. Um, and so we did one where you uh, it was a uh, um, AppSec, right? And so you, it, what it did was uh, you had to find the different vulnerabilities in this application. And after each step, it actually gave you like a tutorial um, on, on how to do it and why it was, uh, you know, why it was vulnerable. And it, it's kind of amazing because it was very like applicable to the person, right? Because it was simulating a bank, a banking app. And it's like, Whoa! I don't want anybody being able to see that, yeah, you know. And right. so, um, so making it personal and fun um, for uh, for our standards of business conduct at Microsoft, it's like a it's like a um, it's like a, a TV show, you know. It's like a series, and so you're like, what's gonna happen next? You know, this like days of our lives all over again <laughs> that my my mom used to watch you know yeah. and uh and you want to you want to see the next episode because you want to know what happens and there's like cliffhangers and like you're actually excited to see what's going to happen um so the i think of, that, yeah gamification that, is another like yeah. another some yeah. of these things right like uh, even just some kind of goal that people can work to with an associated with reward and things everybody like that. wants a trophy and a gold star okay yeah let's do it yeah it, it is it's and it's so interesting because so many places are still stuck in that that required training that nobody wants to take and frankly the same one year after year so it becomes this this method of how quickly can i fake my way through this um rather yeah. than actually trying to bring 
the education to the level of the person that they're that they're with you know right uh, I like right. you know I like some, some of your ideas about about bringing it to the person being where they are like you're mentioning giving them swag and stuff and I'm sitting here going it means being with them like and I, I don't mean you have to come into the office necessarily but like that concept of actually engaging the person rather than here's an email click the link follow the instructions waste your time because we know you're not paying attention to it but right like it's yeah okay so ryan one of my favorite so of all of the i probably listened to i don't know probably three to four hours of you talking um through these podcasts because they were really great they were great it was and now I my mean, face it was really is good content. Thanks. thanks for that no problem. It's no the problem. lighting. It's it's just the light. It's okay. <laughs> right. No, but really, it was it was really really good content. But I think that the thing that um was what I what I like to call like a fish to the face, like that's surprising and shocking, right? Just I know I know people always give me that look, but I use it anyway I, no, because I'm, I'm just, just imagining like, hitting you with a fish like, in the face, like, right? Like, yeah, like like salmon like, oh. and just like bam. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. Sure. I love the like Washington like touch on it that it has to be a salmon. I love that. <laughs> so um, it's good. It's good. You said that there are, it's not just about, you can do the trainings, right? We can do the tech and education and, but people will still do things that they know better not to do. Right. It's something that you said. And I was like, well, we're all guilty of that. And how many times have we talked to our friends in IT that are still just like, yeah, I just use the same password for these like other applications or just whatever, right? So how do we as a community, as an IT security organizations, companies really, uh, let's be honest, like a race as a whole for every problem in the whole world. Let's go to that level, right? But really like, how do we get past that? How do we get people to understand how important it is so they don't do the thing they know they shouldn't be doing, well, right? Don't. You don't. Solid answer. You don't because real people. Aspects. So th this is what this is the thing that that people need to understand about just humans, right? Um, and whenever you're developing something, it's the path of least resistance. Okay, like you have to make it easy. When you make things easy, that's where people will flow. Mm. And then when you get enough people flowing that way, that becomes a social norm, which yep. increases the ease of doing that. Like, I mean, Jay was talking about using WhatsApp, you know, like, yeah, he went away from text messaging, but then he went to Facebook, um, you know, like it's totally secure, <laughs> but like, why aren't you using signal? You know, it's like, um, but, uh, but if you make it easy and you make it, um, uh, beneficial mm -hmm. to the person um, in a way that that they're not seeing the benefit um, like in an abstract way, right? They're seeing the real value for themselves, right? So I use a I use a password manager, and I love I love using a password manager. Why? Because I don't put my username or password in anything. It autofills for me. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm using uh, the uh, Microsoft Authenticator and an Edge browser combined with my with my profile, mm -hmm. yeah. now it's like I could do it on my phone. I could, it doesn't matter whether I'm I'm going to a site and creating, uh, you know, uh, credentials on on my computer. Then when I go to my phone, I can use the same browser with the same identity, and it's there. I don't have to do a, I don't have to do yeah. it a second time. So you've saved me time. Yep. You've made it easy on me and it's more secure because I'm not entering my, my password, right? Because yep. I don't have to know my password and the, you know, the 20 character random whatever um, that I'm using for my password, like that's what I'm using. Um, or, you know, I'm using this little tiny um, uh, USB-C key that I can pop in or I can just touch, right? Then that's on my key ring. Um, but I mean, that to me is hard, uh, is harder than, than just having my phone because I always have my phone with me, but I don't, I don't need to have my keys in my hand in order to start my car anymore. Right. Yeah. I just, 
I just have to have it somewhere close to me, <laughs> you know, and then I push a button and, and it starts. Um, so it's like if we put the things that make them more secure with the with the things that they are already using in life and that makes their lives easier, that removes barriers rather than um, creates barriers. That's how yep. that's how you do it. Right. Yep. You can you can get you can try and educate people and that's all well and good. But you might you might get, you know, um, you know, a percentage of people that um, that actually pay attention to the training and they listen to it. Right. Right. Um, but it only takes one one person to to not uh, to not do the thing that they're supposed to do. Right. They, they go over to this mom and pop shop and they enter in their work credentials because they're buying a pizza and a cake for somebody's, you know, anniversary, whatever. And, uh, and that mom and pop shop doesn't have any security. It gets compromised. They, they replay those credentials against the organization and, and there you go. That's it. That's all it takes. Um, and so if you just make things easy so that they don't ever have to do that, like, like I said, I'm not going to use my work password on any other site. Why? Because I don't know it. You know, <laughs> I I was I, I really fantastic. for a moment I thought you were gonna be like really good I don't answer. want my work password to be hacked and you're like because I don't know it and I'm like that's amazing. Yeah, that was yeah. really like I I it's not because that I I I don't want to of course I right. don't want to but also I physically can't because I don't know it. You know, and it 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 is harder for me to go and get it right? To go and get my password. So that that's right. creating a barrier. I put a barrier yep. in front of me getting my work password. And so I'm not going to do that because I'm human, supposedly. Um, but because, you know, I'm human and I, I take the path of least resistance. Right. That is Unless so... Unless I'm trying to win and then... This is... I, if you would have asked me before we had this conversation, I would have not said that having it easy is the most important thing but this undercuts everything else that we've talked about. And I would, I feel like there's a strong argument to be made that the ease of it is the most important thing, no matter what you're doing, because you cannot, you're absolutely right about everything that you just said. And I just, I, I feel like that this is, uh, I don't know. I don't feel like that's communicated. I mean, I don't feel like people communicate that it even should be easy enough, let alone people making the argument that it's the most important thing. And I think that there's a strong argument to be made that it is the most important thing after you just said that. That's a real, I'm really glad that you were just like, no, you can't do that. People are never going to care. I'm just like, you know what? I think that you're, you you're not going to make everyone right. care. You know, right. it's not going to happen. Just, it has to be easy. Yeah. They must see what's in it for them or they're just not going to do it. And it doesn't matter even how simple it is. If they don't care, if it's not easy, if it's not easier than doing the other thing. Great. Well, Ryan, that's... I think you blew his mind. Yeah, I'm really, like, this was fantastic. This was amazing. Um, absolutely amazing. It's like, it's it's just one of those things, like, I never thought about it from that angle before, and I just, I, I like, want to do a whole other episode just on making security easy and how important it is. Like, I'm not kidding. This, yeah. this is fantastic. You should. Oh, thank you. Great. <laughs> Maybe we I'll, will. I'll listen to it. Hey, maybe I'll get some ideas. All right. All there right. we go. Well, well, you'll listen to it and tell us how good it is, right? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And Ryan. poke fun at you for using WhatsApp. I knew Please. that was coming. The minute you said poke Please. fun at you, I'm like, the next words are going to be. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I accept. I, honestly, like everybody uses everybody uses WhatsApp. You can't get away from it. It's like every a lot of people use Facebook. You, you can't get away from it, right? right. It, when you go to places like LATAM, for example, mm -hmm. um, they actually have a, a contract with the telecoms that make it so that you can use WhatsApp for free. Like it's, yep. it doesn't count against the, the, um, yeah. the, the plan yep. of the, uh, of the user to use WhatsApp. And so it, it's the stuff like that that makes it very prevalent. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, this was an amazing episode. Ryan, thank you so much again for your time, for agreeing to do this with us and for putting up with us for almost a whole hour. I can't believe that you did that. And we just were really appreciative. This was absolutely fantastic. Um, and really absolutely incredible information. You certainly changed my mind about 
this. Like, I'm just, I'm like, I you're knew still, it was important. You're still like blown away. I know. I Dude, I'm like, whoa, man, my mind's just like. But um, before we sign off, though, I do want to say one thing. Jay doesn't know I'm going to do this, but no. Ryan, Jay just got made an MVP, and I want to give him a big shout out and congratulations. Woo! Woo! Microsoft MVP. Woo! Thank Way you. to go. I love it. Well deserved. I'm really Congrats. proud of you. Really but happy. Clearly not on the security side. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Yeah. That's okay. We'll get you there. We'll That's get you. Right. That's right. That's right. So oh, Jay, you. congratulations again. You deserve uh, a lot of a lot of credit for that, and that means, of course, that you've been helping a lot, a lot of people understand this stuff, which is the biggest picture, right? So, just really proud to uh, to be working with you on this, and uh, I'm proud of you for for making it over to that hill. And again, that you've you're the kind of guy that spends all that time helping so many people with this stuff and the M365 Chicago and all the things that you've been doing. So. Um, Really, really Congratulations. cool. Congratulations. Yeah, that's really cool. Ryan, yeah, do, you, do you have anything nice else surprise. that you want to say as we sign off here? Just anything else that you want to add that you feel like is really important or anything that you want to do to make fun of us before you peace out? The, the floor is yours. Stop um, using WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop using SMS. Uh, check to see if all of your, um, if the services that you use have a have a second factor, you know, um, and use that where you can. Uh, if you can't use it, then use SMS, um, you know, because SMS 2FA is better than no 2FA. Um, and follow me on Twitter, Ryan, yes, R-Y-E-N underscore Mac, M-A-C. Yeah, great. Yep, there so follow go. Ryan on Twitter, Jay Lease, Connor Willis. We're all signing off. Jay, you have anything else you want to say before we go? Nope, I'm out. If you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more just like it, make sure you click the subscribe button, notifications, and go to onthespot.tech for more from Buzzkill and our sibling podcasts.